welcome on into KSL Plus. So this past weekend, love was definitely in the air. Of course. At least at my house, okay. <laughs> well, it seems so were romance-related scams. Yeah, so listen to this, and I had no idea about this. According to FBI numbers across the U.S., nearly 20,000 people lost upwards of $475 million last year to romance scams. 1.5 million of that came from Utahns. In 2019, romance scams apparently were the second costliest scam in Utah. So investigative reporter Matt Gebhardt takes us beyond, behind the story now, and uh, particularly the story of a Utah woman who lost a lot. Well, yeah, so, you know, as we were looking into this, we were just trying to figure out where the Utah numbers compared to the national numbers, and we started talking to the FBI about that to kind of break those numbers down. And remember, those numbers are just the people who reported it. Those are just yeah. the people who thought to themselves, man, I've been duped. Well, one such person, the FBI tells us, who was duped in just this horrible way was somebody who fell in love. And they met somebody online, as is very commonplace these days. Sure. And they met somebody online, and they fell in love. And you're very protective of your financial information. If I said, hey, Matt, hey, Ashley, can I have your bank account information? No! No, no, way. no, no of course not. <laughs> so, but if your spouse might be a different story. I know my wife has, I don't even know what, where my money right, is. My right. wife takes care of most of those things. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, spouse, so when you're in love, those things kind of become a different situation. And this woman fell in love. And she thought that she was in a relationship. And it went on and on for so much time that over the course of many, many months, years really, she found her entire life savings, about $400,000 drained. Wow. And then, and it was all those little things like, I need a couple of bucks here. Oh, I've, I've gotten myself into a little bit of trouble. I got to pay, you know, a little bit of bail bondsman stuff. I got to, yeah. you know, so the, the story is the kind of things that you might think of that would come up in a normal relationship. Right. And she actually got in so deep that she ended up reverse mortgaging her house, the FBI tells us. Oh, no. And so now she actually went into more debt in order to, in order to, what turned out to be just, just a big fat scam. Wow. So do they have a joint bank account or... Like, did she combine with You know, him? I don't know, and I didn't ask, but it, no. it, it, I believe she just sent it away. Because if he was asking... Uh, wiring money. Right. Usually these things happen with wiring money away well, this, uh, to this person. This situation sounds like, you know, that person gained her trust, but it seems like in a lot of situations we hear blackmail is the issue and, and why people kind of just give over willingly. Well, and that seems to be the thing that keeps coming out of these romance scams. So now yeah. it's, it starts with, I love you, give me something. I love you, give me a couple of bucks, that kind of thing. And then when you finally catch on... Maybe over the course of this relationship, you took a couple of pictures of yourself, especially with an internet relationship. Right. Mm -hmm. Maybe you know you're you're trying to you know, keep the romance alive. Uh, a couple of pictures that maybe you wouldn't want your mom and dad and boss to see, mm -hmm. and so these photos get sent off to this person who turns out to be a scammer. And then when you figure it out, or maybe just try to break things off because I've decided I want to actually have a relationship with someone I can meet in person. Yeah. Uh, all of a sudden, it's like, okay, well I've got those pictures of you, and if you don't send me money, I'm going to send out these pictures. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that, that's the kind of thing that comes around. And so you know, you, what you really just need to do is watch out for those red flags. If you're in a relationship and the person refuses to meet in person, it may be very well a scammer. Right. If this person is asking for money, especially right out of the gate, this person may very well be a scammer. If you're being asked to send pictures that, you know, you wouldn't want splashed on the front page of the Deseret News, probably don't send those pictures. Probably not. Right, um, right, right. So. right. Well, yep. great tips there. And it just seems like, how can people get into these situations? But there are so many people that do fall for yeah. it because it seems so real. It does seem very real. And again, I, I, this is what shocked me. That it happens, we know it happens. Mm -hmm. But the fact that 1.5 million, that's just last year and just from Utah. Right. 20,000 people around the country, uh, I can't remember, several hundred from the state of Utah, but 1.5 million from the state of Utah, the second costliest scam. The only one that was worse than that in all, the entire state of Utah was somebody getting into like your system, somebody mm -hmm. hacking into your system or reverse engineering you getting malware on your computer. Mm -hmm. So those ones that we talk about all the time, Romance scams was number two for the entire state of Utah. And not everybody wow. reported, right? So no, we, yeah, that's, right. that's just that. the people who called the FBI and said, uh-oh, I've been duped. Oh, Chances wow. are it's more than that. Yeah. Matt, what are you working on now? Okay, so we've got a pretty neat one coming up on Thursday. So um, we, we hired and we went to this old sugar house home, and we found an Inter uh, we found this old sugar house home that had all sorts of leaks, and you can just feel the drafts. You know, you've been in these hundred plus year old houses, and yeah. you can just feel the drafts, you can feel the leaks. And so, we hired an energy auditor, and we asked him to come down. and What would it take to make this home more efficient? How much could reasonably be saved, would you think? And he came down and he gave us his report. It talks as you might expect replace the windows, replace all the insulation, the kind of stuff like, yeah, as long as you got a few, you know, tens of thousands of dollars laying around, like none of us actually do. So, we decided. 
what, what can we do for about a hundred bucks? So we went down to a hardware store with a hundred dollar bill and it's just, let's buy some of that cellophane that you see kind of wrapped on people's windows. Let's buy some caulk. Let's buy some, they've got these things that you can put inside of like, uh, uh, you know, the outlets and stuff and just kind of you know, foam that you can stuff in there because a lot of heat actually escapes through outlets we discovered. Huh. And so as we're doing that and it's like, okay, and so now what happens? For this about $100, we sealed up this house as best we could. Again, not as good as new windows, but as best we could. Let's see how we did. And I'll tell you what, I was surprised and the energy auditor was shocked, he told me, by wow. how much energy we were actually able to save for okay. really next to nothing. Wow, okay. We're gonna be watching for that one. I think a lot of people are interested. Just yes. how they can save money and keep warm. And so, and if people, uh, we should say, you know, if they do have a concern, if they have a question, or if they have something they're, you know, wondering about, how do they get a hold of you? How do they? Uh... I'm part of the KSL Investigates team. So Mike uh -huh. Hedrick, Brittany Glass, and myself. Mine's easy to remember, Matt at KSL.com. If you email me, uh, we'll get back to you. Uh, we're looking for anything. A, a, a story is anything that starts with, if you tell it to me and it makes me want to pound my fist on the table and say, well, <laughs> that's not right. And then we'll take it from there. Okay, Perfect. there's the qualifier. Thank you, we can't okay. wait.